I'm Buzz Stoddard with Cruising Yachts in Marina Del Rey, uh, presently down in our San Diego location on our commissioning docks where we are here to deliver this beautiful brand new black hulled uh, Genoa 57 to Rhonda Toller, its uh, new owner, and a little crystal to go with that. Thank you. So we'd like to do um, uh, some some questions and answers, a, a, a bit of a tour of the boat, and um, get you up to speed on uh, all of the features and uh, uh, equipment that, that come with a, a fully equipped boat. It's probably the most nicely equipped boat that we've had to date, and so it's a good uh, uh, example of, of a boat to go through. We thought it would be fun to get a little perspective from uh, the buyer's point of view on the purchase process for uh, a new Genoa like this. So we thought we'd ask um, Rhonda some questions about her experience here. And I guess probably the best one to start with is why a Genoa 57? Well, I've always dreamed of a boat in my future that would be a large cruising boat. And I knew someday when I came across the boat, I would instantly know that this was the boat of my dreams and my destiny. And I've waited and I've looked at a lot of boats. And however, when I went to the boat show last fall, I walked up to this boat, I saw the teak decks, I came inside and I saw the dinghy garage and I said, this is my dream boat. And this is the boat I want to cruise on long distance offshore. And this is a, this is a beautiful boat. I'm really proud to be the owner. Well, we're very pleased with that and, and uh, doing our best to make all those dreams come true. Tell us a little about your uh, sailing background and your boating background. I grew up in a power boating family from the age you know, from walking and uh, years and years of power boating. However, my entire life I dreamed of being a sailor and I would see movies or shows or see boats out in the ocean and they'd be sailing and I said, someday I'm going to do that. And so when about 16 or 17, I, um, I just knew that that was going to be my destiny down the road. However, it started after my kids. I started sailing actually as an adult and learning. And how I had to learn was the only way I could get on a boat was at the time was racing. So I started uh, jumping on and crewing on racing sailboats all over my yacht club with whoever would take me on the boat. Or for a girl, you don't get asked to do a lot of racing sailing, so I thought, well, I'll just buy my own boat. So I bought a Par 30. Everybody thought I was absolutely insane, and because <laughs> it's a fun racing boat, raced her for five years, went all the way to the Worlds in San Francisco, fifth out of 12. And when I finished the Worlds with my team there, we bought a Far 40. So now I have my, I also have a Far 40 racing sailboat. And, and but this is my dream boat to cruise and enjoy and relax and do more offshore long distance so that's why I have it as you know. Perfect. Um, tell us about the name. The name of the boat is Wild Thing and I kept the name Wild Thing because every, everybody in Newport Beach knows me as Wild Thing more <laughs> me than, than the boat and my Far 30 was named Wild Thing, and my team, all, we all wear leopard, and it's kind of a really fun theme, and everybody just loves it, and, and it's when you're out in the harbor, everyone calls out or sings to you, hey, Wild Thing, and then they start singing the song for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it just really makes it really fun, and so my Far 30 was Wild Thing, and then my Far 40 came along, and I said, okay, I'm just going to name it Wild Thing. We kind of tease that it's the big Wild Thing, and... Um, now, uh, when it came time to own the 57, there, everyone's asking, well, why would you name it Wild Thing? And I said, well, it's Wild Thing 3. So, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's just who we are, and it's just really fun, and so it's Wild Thing 3. It's great. It's very fun. You've added about every upgrade in the book here, so um, uh, it would be interesting, I think, to get a feel from you for um, uh, the particular items that you like and um, maybe take us on a little tour through the boat. This is our main salon and um, what are some of the features that you like about it and some of the things that you did for the boat? Well when I first came on the boat, um, before I added anything, I loved the entire design. 
the lighting is really great, the windows, how the window treatments. Uh, I love the chocolate leather and uh, the table's great, how it um, became a cocktail table versus a full table. I do like to cook and dine and, and be on the boat. I loved how the galley was open and um, everything was uh, nice and low here. The couch, this is very, I call James Bond kind of boat. <laughs> Liquor locker, the hidden liquor locker, which you can see that on our first maiden voyage, we uh, have a few <laughs> items in there. <laughs> it's very start. nice. I think one of the items I did add is I did add the, a TV, and um, I, originally they offered it inside. However, I didn't want to just watch it here, so they put it on a swivel, which is nice because I can pull it out. And I can make dinner and dine and watch the TV from the dining table or if I want to I can push it back and from the galley I can watch TV so I'm very happy with this it's a wonderful large TV and they did a great job installing that I upgraded direct TV a few other things uh, that have been added she has an iridium phone here a single sideband um, radio and um, uh, a, a touch screen navigational display and all the instruments there as well. You have the ice maker <laughs> and then you lift this here, opens your cabinet for the washer dryer. The master stateroom is wonderful. I love it. Um, how it has the pedestal bed and it's very open and spacious. It, it's very nice. Uh, they, I had a TV added to this room as well. Every room has a TV. The one feature I did add is I had a plug put inside so that I, at the vanity, which I also love the vanity, that I could get ready in the morning and use my blow dryer. And I did upgrade my inverters, inverter. Um, that was one of the things I did as well. And one of the best things you also that I did is I had uh, fresh water in the heads. Two of the uh, changes I made in the galley, I, uh, they, Jano added the microwave for me, which was very nice and it fits in beautifully and I love it. I also had a plug put in up behind here, a two plug, so for if I didn't want to cook and I wanted to crock pot or something else, or a coffee pot, um, I've added the plug up here. Other than that, I, you know, I love the fact that this is all fresh water on the boat, the heads and the kitchen sink, that I'm able to have fresh water and not have the seawater inside. And the, the galley is very spacious and plenty of storage room on the entire boat. There's, I think, more storage room than I need at the moment. <laughs> so it's great. It's a great layout. One of the uh, other nice features of the Genoa boat is the two aft staterooms for guests. Uh, they're set up to be a twin beds or pushed together and made one bed, which is very nice. I added a small TV on a swivel also for each bedroom. Uh, the electronics, uh, each TV is on its own, so everybody in, the everybody in their rooms can watch a completely different channel or a movie. They don't, um, we don't have to watch all the same. The heads are wonderful and the showers are spacious and they're really beautiful. And again, I did put the fresh water heads in all of the bathrooms so that the seawater is not inside. I thought it would be interesting to get Rhonda's perspective on the purchase process. Um, it's pretty elaborate for a boat uh, as complex as this. Um, but uh, I would be interested, Rhonda, in, in uh, how you felt about the, the process, the financing, trade, that type of thing. Well, when I went to the boat show uh, in Long Beach, I'd been to many years of boat shows and looked at many different boats, and I never did find the boat exactly what I wanted. It was always, should I change this, or oh, if I did this, or had this. And at the boat show, I walked up, I came on this boat, and I said, this is it. This is the boat and I knew it the second I got on because of the design and how beautiful it is and the layout and 
the teak deck and everything that went that is part of this boat is just amazing. So I walked on. I didn't look at any other boats at the boat show. <laughs> I just I walked onto the boat. I met Buzz, and that was it. And I by the time I left, I had bought this boat within 24 hours. The features that made it worth it to me to buy this boat, one, I think buying a boat brand new at a boat show is really a great opportunity for an owner of a boat because you do come up with a deal, a package deal to buy the boat then. So I, I feel that the price that was offered for the boat and everything that was came with the boat uh, made it worth it to me to buy the boat. Um, I also, the financing, they, I believe 24 hours after I said I'd buy the boat, the finance um, representative came down to the boat, sat at the table with me, and went over everything, made it very easy for me to understand and have, and, and the whole process of doing the loan. The interest rate was key. It was, it was a great interest rate, a, a wonderful experience getting the loan. It was simple, and the people at the... Um, where I did the loan with were amazing and made it an easy experience to finance. And how about the trade process? Yes, another very wonderful thing. Um, I was in the process of figuring out and selling my FAR 30 because I, was I had moved on to my FAR 40 and I asked Buzz to ask that can I chain or trade in my FAR 30 for the purchase of the boat. That would be a huge help for me. I wouldn't have to be dealing with selling my boat or moving it or listing it. And so we did negotiate on the boat. I was very happy with what they gave me on the, my trading on the boat. And that helped me a lot to use towards my upgrades uh, on this boat. So I was very thankful that you worked that out for me. It was nice we were able to uh to, to sell your FAR 30 fairly quickly too, so it worked out for everyone. Um, how about the commissioning process? Um, you know, it's it's fairly lengthy on a, on a boat like this. It's uh, uh, got to be a little frustrating to go through all of that. At the same time, um, you know, everybody was, I think, working hard. What was the commissioning experience like? Well, when we sat down and I knew, I, I personally preferred the forward master and the locker versus uh, the captain's quarters for me. I don't. I didn't need a captain's quarters. So when I decided to get with the boat, I knew that I had to have the boat moved here, which worked out fine. Holidays were coming, so I figured that that was a little, you have to give or take when you're doing something in the middle of a holiday and buying a boat. And I knew that my dream was to have a black hull. I, Many people have advised me not to go to the Bible. <laughs> Should I cut the heart out? No. Should I revive that? Sorry. Um, I knew that my dream was to have a black hole that was always in the picture of my future for my, the, my dream boat. And so I did. It was worth everything to take it to the shipyard and have it painted. They did an amazing job. It's beautiful. It's exactly the way I wanted it. And um, it's really exciting and so I knew that would take a little more time so the commissioning did add to that probably a little more not in the normal. The rest of the process I was very aware that I knew that it would be a process to add everything I added, the TVs, the equipment, the stereo, it was a lot. Um, I added under the boat five lights under the boat so when I go to Catalina my boat is going to light up <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's going to be so I knew it would take time, but it's been great. The staff, uh, Mike, oh my gosh, amazing, and Ed, and the entire team that worked on the boat, ev everything is great. There was no issues and perfect. Good. It's nice to hear. Yes, we put um, two lights aft, one light on each side of the keel, and one light under the uh, bow thruster. So it really will have the effect of, of floating in the air at night uh, when she's over at the island. So that should be fun. It's a good safety feature too. Well, one of the things that will be really fun is um, because we have, I have my racing boat and I have this boat. And we kind of call this the mothership. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to actually move her to Catalina 
when we race, and then the road, bring the racing boat over, and then we're going to have the two boats side by side, and maybe more owners will want to have a cruiser next to their racing boat in the future <laughs> when they see her. Rhonda's a member of Bahia Corinthian, which a lot of you will recognize as the sponsor of the uh, uh, Ensenada race, the largest international race in the world, <laughs> we like to say around here. Welcome to the cockpit of the beautiful new Juno 57. One of the stronger features of uh, most of the Juno designs is the spaciousness of the cockpit, and uh, this really exemplifies that. What are some of the things that you find that you like about the cockpit area and sailing? Well, the, the cockpit area is beautiful, it's wide, it's very, very, very comfortable. I personally have boat every weekend. I have for many, many years. Um, with being a member of a yacht club, we pretty much go down to our boat and we stay for the entire weekend. So I knew that this needed to be really comfortable and I wanted to use you know, like a little like a second home. So the double table opening up and the sun back chairs are beautiful. The canvas work I had done, uh, memo, amazing. I mean, the, he came in and he did a beautiful job with all of the cushions. The Dodger is fabulous and, and it's so clear and so beautiful that this was done very, very, very well. Very happy with it. And um, one of my special things that I like also outside is I added a, a plug outside on the side, a double plug, because it gets a little chilly or moisture at night in Newport Beach. So I have a table heater lamp that's electrical so I can keep warm out here. And then we have the refrigerator, ice box in the table and refrigerator. We've got the uh the electric furlers and electric winches, and it was great fun uh, great. seeing Rhonda setting and furling the sails on her own uh, first time out. So uh, the, the rigging setup and layout is uh, pretty accommodating, I think, here. Here we are on the deck of the new um, Wild Thing 3, and as she mentioned, it's a beautiful teak, and the disdain and the color of it, I think, is are there any features up here that, that uh, caught your eye initially on the boat? Well, I do, uh, I do love the forward uh, area. I didn't need the captain's quarters. So for me, I like the fact that if there's extra storage or if I'm going around Catalina Island and sometimes I'll be in harbors, there's no trash. So I'm able to put a trash can in here and store trash, bring extra water, extra dock lines. Uh, if I'm going somewhere I might need a double anchor, I can even bring an extra spare. Conditions would warrant that. So that's a very large storage area. So I think for me that that works out really good. And if someday I would possibly do Baja Ha Ha, which I would need a code zero sail, it would fit in there. And I wouldn't have to keep any sails or anything in my beautiful boat. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other upgrades that I put in the boat um, uh, that I really like, last night we were here for the first time at night, and we put lights underneath each step. So that was really nice coming to the boat and having the stairs lit. And at the boat show, again, one of the best features that I loved about the boat, especially if I'm going to be doing long distance offshore cruising, is the dinghy garage. Uh, for me, having a boat before that I've always had to put the dinghy on the bow or put the dinghy on a crane or having it here, having a dinghy outside the boat, the dinghy gets dirty and the covers get dirty and it just, it's kind of, it's just not a very good look for the boat either. You have this amazing, beautiful yacht and I didn't want a yacht that I have to hang a dinghy off of. So when I saw this boat and I came around the corner and it had a dinghy garage, I, that was another thing I knew this was the boat for me. So, so one of the best, or, uh, there's other great parts about having a dinghy garage besides the fact that the dinghy fits inside. It has a crane, crane that will help pull in the dinghy and then has an air compressor to reinflate or reinflate the dinghy if that you wanted to go a little bit larger one. 
this is a great storage area and garage space also. And after power boating cruising for years, one of my favorite places on a power boat is the fact that it has the stern area that opens up like a platform. And so for me, I love to be on the back of the boat. I can be on the platform. I can bring my dinghy up to the platform to get on the boat, at, especially in a mooring. That's really nice. Uh, swimming off the back, fishing. I'm a big fishing girl, so I also plan to have fishing poles and gear <laughs> under here. For me, this is, this is great. I can have all the toys I want, put them away, and then I don't have to worry about a dinghy hanging off the back of the boat when I go sail off somewhere else in the world. Wild thing, I think you move. Me. 